All right, so I just got done watching Thor Love and Thunder for the first time. I'm actually going to see it again in less than an hour. And uh, yeah, the non-spoiler review should come out later tonight. Spoiler review should come out tomorrow. And for this, no spoilers in here. This is my initial reaction to the film. So it's not gonna be like a fully fleshed out review. Also, sorry for all the background noise. I was gonna record in my car with the windows up, but it was way too hot. There's a freaking highway right over there next to the movie theater. So I'm sure the audio isn't gonna be great on this one, but this video shouldn't be too long. So just wanted to pop in here and say what I thought about the film after watching it once. And also there is a car coming. So this is gonna be kind of awkward, but who cares? Uh, I'm doing it for YouTube. But yeah, Thor Love and Thunder, I thought was a pretty great movie. I don't like it as much as I liked Thor Ragnarok. I definitely, I think Thor Ragnarok is like one of, thanks. Uh, Thor Ragnarok is definitely one of my favorite Marvel movies in general. I do think it's the best Thor movie. Uh, this movie here, I would say is the second best Thor movie. The first one isn't too bad. The second one is awful in my opinion. So uh, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't have high expectations for this movie because I went into Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness with very high expectations, expecting to see a lot more than I saw. And I was a little let down by that movie, not only by, you know, certain things that weren't quite in it, but certain things that were in it that I didn't necessarily care for. If you want to hear about that, you can go find my reviews for that. But yeah, um, I, I made sure to have my expectations at a moderate level as to not be disappointed and I'm glad I did that because I think I would have been a little disappointed if uh, I went in with those higher expectations that I went into uh, Multiverse of Madness with but yeah overall I mean Chris Hemsworth is great in the movie uh, I love Tessa Thompson as Valkyrie Taika Waititi as Korg remains to be the funniest thing about these these two Thor movies at least Ragnarok and Love and Thunder um, I love Korg I love Taika Waititi I love his direction in this film I love him as a director in general, as an actor. I think he's very funny, very charismatic, and uh, I love when he brings his voice to the character of Korg. Um, man, there's a lot of really cool things to spoil in here. Nothing that's like too insane, I would feel like. And there's probably a lot in here that are like little Easter eggs to certain things that I didn't quite catch. Um, there's a specific scene I'm thinking about, which I obviously won't say here where I'm like, all right, this kind of looks like a certain character, but I'm, it, I can't be for certain. For certain, is that? I don't, I don't think that's uh, grammatically correct, but yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty good film. It, if you're going into it expecting it to be just as funny, if not funnier than Ragnarok, you're going into it with the, uh, with the wrong mindset because while this is still directed by Taika Waititi and it has a lot of his humor in it, it does have a lot of darker elements in it involving you know death um you know i don't want to go too deep into it obviously and spoil things here but death some things involving children that some people might be a little just a little uneasy by i don't think it's gonna like ruin the movie for anybody but um you know with things that are going on right now it it kind of uh it can kind of make people think about it. It definitely made me think about it for a minute, but um, just the way Taika Waititi, he, he keeps it light while also doing the dark elements. So it's nothing ever too heavy, but I also think that might be a little bit of a disservice to the movie because at times they, they keep joking when they should be taking things a little more seriously. And that's something a little bit that bothered me about Thor Ragnarok, but in the end, like that's still one of my favorite Marvel movies. So. And here comes another truck. They're going to judge me and their windows are down. So this is going to be really awkward. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to pause for a moment here. This is so awkward. I've never recorded in, pu recorded in public like this before. I mean, I've recorded in my car in the parking lot here before, but I never, never stood outside. So I feel a little weird right now. But yeah, I mean, overall, it was a pretty good film. Definitely not my favorite Marvel movie out of all the Marvel movies, but I would probably, if I were putting it at a tier list, which I don't think I'm going to do a tier list for this because it was, it's been too, it, it would be too soon since my last MCU tier list. So uh, I, I'm probably not going to make one for this one. Maybe by the time like Black Panther comes out, I'll do another MCU tier list with like Miss Marvel and She-Hulk added on to that. But yeah, um, I would probably end up putting this either... 
I don't know, after only seeing it once, it's hard to judge completely, but for now, it's at like a B plus for me. So in terms of like ranking it from one to 10, I'd probably have it at about a seven to, to a 7.5 at the moment. But by the time I record my non-spoiler review, you'll know my concrete ranking and you know, where I think it falls on the tier list. So yeah, um, pretty good film overall. I think Gore as the villain here, played by Christian Bale. I think he was fine. Um, he started to give me kind of Malekith vibes from Thor The Dark World, where I'm just like, the character doesn't feel quite fleshed out enough. You can kind of see where he's coming from, but the way they pull it together, I think it works inevitably. Um, it's just not my favorite villain, honestly. Um, I don't know. I, I think he, he plays it very well, for sure. He plays it creepy. But in the end, is it like one of the most memorable villains from the MCU? Not at all. Um, I would probably put him on the same level as maybe like Ultron, maybe. Like where it's menacing, but not like the greatest villain. I don't know. That's just me personally. I don't love Ultron from Age of Ultron. But uh, man, everybody is just coming up right now. But yeah, overall, pretty pretty solid film definitely excited to watch it again and i definitely need to watch it again in order to fully know how i feel about it am i gonna watch it three times in the theater like i did with uh dr strange and the multiverse of madness probably not probably just these two times but still a pretty solid film and uh there's a lot i like about it and there's some things i don't quite love about it so that's all i'm really gonna say right now because like i said i'm gonna have the non-spoiler and spoiler reviews coming out to uh later on today most likely and then tomorrow um if not today for that non-spoiler review it'll end up being tomorrow but i should be able to get around to it tonight but uh yeah that's really all i have to say about throw love and thunder right now and for those of you who have watched it let me know down in the comments below what you think of the film without spoiling anything because this is spoiler free so let me know what you thought about it without spoiling anything. If you haven't seen it, let me know what your excitement level is, especially after some things that I had to say. Did your excitement level go down a little bit? I would love to know. And, uh, oh yeah, I, I guess I should mention Jane Foster. She, she was pretty great in this movie. But um, yeah, also leave a like on the video and subscribe. Push that notification bell so you never miss an upload. And uh, I'll see you in my non-spoiler review for Thor, Love, and Thunder.